Welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name is Elliot, and on today's episode, we're actually going to talk about 3D printed lures. Amazing. I know. Hold your applause, please. Today, we're going to talk about core shots. Do you know what a core shot is? Not core lock, my friends. Core shot. Core shot is a technique that's being more and more popular, starting to get more and more popular. Uh, I'm not really sure about its origins or anything like that. I'm just a stooge that copies things I see. Oh, that's not good. No, no, no. Oh, you're not going to walk that one so, off. So, if anybody would like to leave in the comments down below about its origins, I'd be very, very interested in reading it. But, for me, this became my on my radar with Chris from World's Worst Fishing. Uh, he got a mold from Angling AI, makes some aluminum molds. Core shot... Uh, big worms, so kind of like a Senko, but, you know, a little bit bigger. I guess they make big Senkos, too. But anyway, what you do is you put a rod through the bait, you shoot the bait, and then you take the rod out, you shoot it again, so you got a different color on the inside of a semi-translucent or transparent bait. Cool idea, right? Core shot. But I don't like worms. I don't like designing worms. I don't like Senkos. Everybody does Senkos. Core shot craw. Huh? Eh? I haven't seen one yet. Figured why not. I figured we could run it through the abdomen of the standard crayfish that you normally see, and it'd be a core shot crayfish. I don't really know why the purpose of this would be, because usually you run the hook down the middle, and usually you you know you use it as a trailer around a jig, so the most important parts of a crawfish are the the pincers and stuff, but. You know, don't overanalyze this, guys, okay? I just got I got time. I used to have more time on my hands, so that's what I did. And this is where we're at. Uh, I took the standard crayfish approach, and I just I did it. Because, I mean, how many times can you change a crayfish design? You can't. It's, a, it's the same basic thing over and over again. But I'll show you uh, kind of what I ended up with and how I, uh, you know, how I did it. So here it is. Here's the core shot mold. A lot going on in this mold, right? Quite a bit different than than my normal stuff. This right here is pretty basic. So this is like the abdomen design on most everything you'll ever see. So this is basically just taking circles. I'm revolving it around and then I'm squishing it down with a scale. So I do have this kind of process set up already on a, a separate video. It's like how many lures can I design a fusion 360 in an hour or something I go through that specifically on how to shrink it down by scale so you end up getting more of a flat uh, profile like this instead of completely rounded on a revolve it's a technique I use quite a bit if you're interested in that be sure to check it out then I'm just gonna take a design for the you know regular pincers essentially and I'm just gonna you know press pull that out for the design I like to do these little paddles I guess there is uh, certain patents already for this paddle design on one side I think rage holds it or something like that obviously I'm not selling any of these designs or anything so I'm just using them for fun for myself so it doesn't really matter but that's something to think about and look into there is kind of like a step up part that they patented. That's the thing about all these designs. You got to be really careful uh, when you're going through because some stuff you just don't even think about. You would think is a common in the space, kind of fair use, fair play space. A lot of those are actually kind of like taken already because nobody's been paying attention. That happens a lot with this kind of stuff. So right now we're looking at the negative molds of this. So. I guess what would this be? Yeah, these are going to be the negative cavity molds. So we're going to put silicone mold max 60 into this. So it's going to be a little bit different, uh, especially because these are going to be considered a core shot mold. So what we have to think about here is this is actually going to be the inverse when we pour in the silicone. So right here you can see this huge cavity for the for the plastisol to come down. This is the nozzle size. This huge cavity here, and then you see this kind of like indentation right here that goes into... Uh, a rounded part this is actually going to be where the nail goes so when we think of this and we see this uh, big cavity in here that's actually going to be filled up with silicone so we'll have a little protrudence out of there when uh, we pull the silicone out that's actually going to hold the nail with the other side so the nail is going to be sandwiched in between these two pieces of silicone it's going to go all the way down to this point here at the kind of I guess head portion of this so the nail is going to fill up this point and be sitting right here at the top 
Let's see if I can get that to show up. So you can see where that nail is going to go. So basically for the nail, all I did here was take off two sides of the head just on the on the bench grinder that I have outside. Took off two sides of the head so it be, actually became a T. It's going down to this point and uh, it'll rest in there for the first shot that we do. So this is essentially all I did. Not much else to say here. I have plenty of videos to show you kind of my ideas on making molds out of silicone and what I do for those, like these indexing locations. If you're interested in that, I have a two part series where I design it in Fusion 360 and I also uh, pour it out in MoldMax 60. Make sure to check those out if you're interested. So, when you're making these molds, the big thing to think about is uh, the print settings. Usually, on something more detailed like this, what I'll do is I'll print out in 0 0.08 layer heights. I always use PLA for my mold masters just because. And then it's a pretty simple process of finding the volume with rice. Then you're just going to spray, after you find the volume with rice, you spray it with a silicone release agent. I'm using Ease Release, like 200. You can get it from Smooth On or wherever else. Seems to work out really well. Spray those out pretty good. And then you can dump in um, your silicone of choice. I like using Mold Max 60 because it has a 60 shore hardness. And that's almost like... Um, I don't know how to really explain it on how tough it is, but it's not a soft plastic. It's not a soft rubber. It's more like just under a tire, tire rubber. So very hard kind of, uh, once you have it molded, you have it molded in well. So use that, put those two pieces together, let those sit for a little while, uh, demolded those. And then I checked it out and see if it worked with the nail. Shoot the first one, uh, the first try I think I did with this, I'm using just your basic plastic from Dead On Plastic. I used completely clear for the first one, and then I did a red inset. So you shoot it first with the nail in, take the nail out, put it back into the mold without the nail, and then shoot through with whatever color you want. So I went with a clear on the first one, and then shot through with a red, Worked out really well. I was happy with that. Started experimenting with some glitters and stuff. Shot the first one, obviously, with the nail in there. Then take the nail out and shot it back again. So I ended up with, like, a clear with a little bit of uh, flake in there and then a deep red line. Then I started messing around with a little bit more. So I tinted it a little bit, put some different flake in there, and then I did a, a black line down the middle. So I think these turned out really, really well. Uh, they'd probably work really great for saltwater fishing, like a prawn kind of substitute or something like that. But overall, I'll probably still use it, put them on jigs and stuff. Uh, transparent baits are kind of hit or miss for me. A lot of times I want it to be a little bit sunnier out when I do it. So I don't know. First cork, core shot craw I've ever seen. So if that's something you're into, please consider subscribing. Maybe give it a like. And until the next one, keep your amps up and wash your hands.